We're back with the bigger picture. While young Canadians continue to sacrifice their lives in Afghanistan, there's another group of Canadians, also in uniform, fighting for a country that's not their own. They choose to fight for Israel. Our correspondent, Loren McNabb, with that story. They don't exactly blend in with the tourists or the holy sites. Soldiers at the bus stop in the city on a walk near the beach. For most Western visitors, this isn't something they'd see at home. For 36,000 Israeli soldiers, it doesn't look like home to them either. At least not the one they were born into. There isn't a single day that goes by that I don't think to myself, three years ago, I never would have imagined myself in this position. Sean Hoffman is a sergeant with the Israeli army, but in 2006, he was sitting in a Toronto classroom. We're looking out at uh, Lebanon here. We have one of the villages just on the other side there that's closest to the border. It's a good idea every once in a while to sort of just have a peek at what's going on over there. Born and raised in Canada, the then 22-year-old was just finishing university and like most his age, was considering his options. For the Jewish Canadian, a life guarding borders for this or any military wasn't one of them. But moving to Israel was. Any person born of a Jewish mother has the right to return to this country. When I came here for the first time, there was this immediate connection. I knew the place existed, but to see it with your own eyes, to feel it, to be in Jerusalem on Friday night during the Sabbath, it sort of touched me personally, deep down inside, in a way that I never really thought possible. And because of that, I was sort of driven to come back until uh, finally I decided that, give it a shot. But a shot at life in Israel meant Hoffman would also have to learn how to shoot for Israel. Slim. Military service is essentially mandatory here. Two years for women, three for men. And after that, one month of training per year, every year, until they're 45. The phone call to your mom where you said, by the way, mom, I'm going to sign up for the Israeli army. It was worse than that. It was at, it was at dinner. Mostly the family probably think I'm a little bit nuts. And uh, the truth is, I probably am. And uh, I think a lot of my friends uh, have a certain respect for it. Did any of them ask you... Why wouldn't you serve in the Canadian Army? I mean, maybe I've heard it once or twice. The answer is usually the same. First of all, the need I don't feel is there. There's no demand for it the way that there is here. The necessity of it isn't the same. There's no direct threat that you feel on Canada. And by the same token, part of what makes Canada what it is, is it's not a militaristic nation. Canada has approximately 65,000 full-time soldiers. While the Israeli Defense Force wouldn't disclose its strength, the IDF is believed to be at least three times that size and 234 of its soldiers are Canadian. This group has known one another since their grade school days in Toronto. You kind of get like tons of huge chains. Got customer service. In customer Canada. service. Yeah. <laughs> United in Israel by what they miss and what they felt was missing from their life in Canada. It's just a tug. It's a, a religious tug, a, a, a Zionist tug. Uh, it's some sort of tug that makes you feel that no matter how comfortable your life is there, it's just something about it isn't right. While Moishe Lipner considered giving to Canada's army, in the end, he too chose the IDF. I'm very patriotic to Canada. I am. I mean. I'm in Israel and I'm wearing a shirt that says everyone loves a Canadian boy. I'm very proud of being Canadian, but it's not the same. Personally for me, all four of my grandparents are Holocaust survivors through some of the worst camps, Auschwitz and whatnot. All of their family was wiped out. So for me to stand in uniform is something that they could only dream of, they didn't even think was possible. And that's a, that's a huge honor. Would you say you're very much a Canadian Israeli or an Israeli Canadian? <laughs> Which is there one side that weighs more than the other? Uh, I, I would have a difficult time picking one or the other, but um, I'm a little bit half and half. The same size as Vancouver Island, about 7.3% of Israel's GDP goes towards its military, compared to just 1.2% of Canada's. Money Israel says it needs to defend its borders. In 2006, it battled with Hezbollah in Lebanon. In January this year, with Hamas in Gaza. Adam Davis was there. It becomes very real at that kind of moment, and that's when it really hits you, then like, you know, I'm from Toronto, how did I get to this point? <laughs> but, and that's really when it becomes really meaningful, and the Army really means, because that's what we're here for. Gaddy Lerner understands the passion Jewish people feel for Israel. I think if I was a child too in Canada or USA or something like that, uh, probably that I think that I need to come to Israel and to do something for my nation. Gaddy says he never killed anyone, but says during patrols near the Palestinian territories, he often witnessed and participated in what he felt were abuses of power. After that you see all the poor Palestinians, um, 
in the border and all this, and they don't have education and they don't have job and they don't have reason to live. So you, you start to understand why they do what they do. With 20 more years of possible service as a reserve soldier, his options are limited. He could take a desk job or claim he has physical or psychological problems and get out of the army altogether. But what he'd really like to do is get out of Israel. Canada is high on his list of places to live. A lot of areas of the world, a lot of regions of the world are so accustomed, especially in the Western world, so accustomed to peace and quiet and security that it's very difficult for them to sympathize or empathize with a country that doesn't have all those things. And uh, for that reason, uh, when Israel takes certain actions, there's no question that Israel's misunderstood. But after 14 months with the IDF, their beliefs have only strengthened. We're not trying to be the oppressors. We're not trying to just be like, oh, you know, oh, you know, lift up your shirt so we can see if you're wearing an explosive belt underneath just because we feel like it. It's really, I think, being in the army allows us to have that reality to understand that this is the situation and the fact that we're here doing something about it is meaningful for ourselves. Fighting for a country that wasn't their first, but could be their last. Coming up on 16 by 9. What we just had now was one adult calling and then over on here that was a pup that was responding. That's next.